Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, May 16, 2024. May God be with you today and may his peace be upon you. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 15. And it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is it written, by the prophet. And though Bethlehem in the land of Judea are not the least among the prince of Judea, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, Bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Amen. Very interesting and powerful word this morning. So many things coming out in this passage, you know, and we give God thanks for, for these information. We give God thanks for these words so that we can understand and put certain things into perspective. So this was speaking about the birth of Jesus, but not only about his birth, but also all the the things that took place during the time of his birth. So he was born in Bethlehem, Judah. And at that time, the king of that region, it was Herod. So the three wise men came to Jerusalem to look for the king because apparently they got word somehow. I know it was orchestrated by the Lord, right? That a king would have been born in Jerusalem, king of the Jews. And so they went and they came to visit and to look for this king. So unfortunately, when they came, they went to Herod to ask for this king. So of course, when Herod heard these things and heard what they were saying, that there was another king in, in Jerusalem, he was afraid. He started to panic and he was upset. So he was all of those things at once. He want to find out what is really happening because he has his own agenda because he doesn't believe that there should be anyone in Jerusalem threatening his reign or his throne. And so he called the scribes and the, the Pharisees and these guys, because remember these guys, they were the elite, so to speak, in Jerusalem, and also the leaders at the, at the church, the leaders of the church at the time. And so they were called, and the king asked them, I mean, the word demanded is used, in fact, strong tone. And he demanded of them where Jesus was going to be born. So, of course, they gave him the information and they said that according to the scriptures, that he would have been born in Bethlehem of Judah. 
you know but something interesting about this that i i don't understand what was going through these leaders and the hebrew nation at the time because if they were expecting jesus to come and they have the sure word of prophecy and the word of god saying that he was going to come and he was going to be born at such a time and such a place or whatever whatever how is it that they rejected him you see how, how messed up that is when you have the wrong interpretation of god's scripture it can lead you down a path that is not very bright because it's the same scripture that you and i are reading now that they read but yet still they came up with a different interpretation and so when jesus came they could not accept him because what they were looking for a different person they had a different concept and a different description in their mind of what jesus would look like and what he would come like now something for you to think about and for me to think about what is our view and our idea of what jesus is now what is our concept of jesus and what do we expect him to come like so that he's coming the second time what are your expectations what do you understand because it is important because what you understand will help to shape the path that you go down and so it is important to know the truth as it is in the word of god and not as you and i want it to be so as i said Herod had his plan and so he called the wise men and told them that look here when you go to bethlehem in fact he sent them to bethlehem and said when you go there and you find this child bring me back word that i can come and worship him too no do you really think that Herod had any intention of going to worship in god or to acknowledge this child in any way surely not his intention was to kill jesus and all of these it was motivated by a greater force than Herod. Herod was just a tool being used this was being orchestrated by satan who wanted to get rid of jesus and so he thought that this was a perfect opportunity because he is a helpless baby he can't defend himself but one thing i know that god can do marvelous things and that is why when you are weak and you feel helpless the perfect person to turn to is god because he's able to protect you from those who seek to destroy you and so there was no way that he could ever get to jesus it god would not allow that never and so when the wise man left Herod's present they were guided by the angel and remember we spoke yesterday i told you that the star a star mean angel and they were guided by what a star so which mean they were guided by what an angel or a messenger you see it so you see where scripture correspond with each other that is why when we are studying we must study line upon line precept upon precept because the bible can already interpret and explain itself but it only will explain itself and make sense to us if we are guided by the holy spirit if we depend on the holy spirit to teach us okay so a star mean angel here okay so they found jesus of course and they brought gifts to him they brought gold and they brought frankincense and they brought myrrh now another thing to note jesus came to save these people his people the jews and everybody the world and the very people that he he came to save gave him nothing it was strangers these men they were not from jerusalem they came from the east according to the scripture and that's where kindness came from to jesus and the very people who claimed that they were expecting jesus to come they were nowhere to be found and it goes to the saying that says what he came to his home and his own knew him not so take comfort in the fact that not everybody in the church will accept you especially if you are standing up for something that is true you will be rejected so don't be discouraged when you are rejected by your own whether it be your families your friends your church brothers and sisters or whomever the world because sometimes the people that treat us the best are complete strangers so there's a lot of lesson in this passage so i encourage you to go back and to read it and as you read i pray that you will be encouraged this is a message of hope i'm giving to you right here so they brought gifts and they offered their gifts and god spoke to the wise men in a dream telling them 
that they should not return to Herod. Because I tell you this, if they had gone back to Herod empty-handed or refused to tell him, their heads would have been on a pole. He would have executed them on the spot. And so, to save the child's life and even their own life, God said, look here, go back home. Don't go back to Herod. Travel a different path to go home, not the same way you came. So you see, when you show kindness, even if you are a complete stranger, God have a way of preserving and blessing you because that's just who God is. And then Joseph was told in a dream by the Lord that he should what? Go to where? Egypt because Herod is seeking to kill the child. And so when he woke up, that's exactly what he did. He took the baby, he took Jesus and Mary and he went down to Egypt. And that's where he stayed until Herod died. And that also fulfill another prophecy. And verse 15 tells us of that prophecy. It says that, That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. And we can find that verse in Hosea 11 verse 1. So that's the quote where it came from. So we can see here from this passage of scripture that Satan he doesn't like God. He doesn't like Jesus. And those who follow Jesus will share in the same kind of persecution, the same kind of treatment because what? They are loyal to God. So this is actually a prophecy in more ways than one because this kind of testify of what will happen to those who are faithful to God in the last days that they will be treated with the same kind of cruelty. People will want to get rid of you. They'll want to destroy you because you stand up for what is right and you stand up for what is true. That is why the world do not like Christians. If you are standing up for the word of God, don't expect the world to like you. They will never like you. It doesn't matter how many of them may come in the media and pretend like they acknowledge God or whatever. They have a different concept of God and it's possible that they are not even talking the same God that you are talking about. And so standing off a moral principle and the things that are right gonna make you an enemy of the world and that's just the reality of things. But just as God protected Jesus and his family, his mother and his father and he took them to Egypt where they could be safe from the cruelty of Herod. So God will protect his people in the last days from the cruelty of the world. He said that he has provided a way in the wilderness where what? His people can be safe. So there is a way of escape but only if we trust in God to lead us in that way. Yes, some may die, but the guarantee that you have dying and standing up for what you believe in and believing in the right thing and believing in God, you will gain eternal life. And I say amen. But just remember that on God's side, you are a winner. On God's side, you will be saved. On God's side, you will be protected. But step out of that mesh of safety and sure destruction will come upon you from your enemies because Satan ain't plain and his plan is to destroy anyone that align themselves with God because he can't get God anymore. Jesus can is rich and so he can't touch him. And so of course he turned to those who are following him. So may God help us that we will remain faithful and that we will trust him to lead us and that we will remain faithful even when it seems like we are boxed in may we never give up but may we stand firm on the word of god because one of these days god is gonna call us out of egypt he's gonna call us out of the wilderness and he's gonna take us to our eternal home we will be safe forevermore may god continue to bless and keep all of us until that day amen